Okay, so how you been doing this week, Thurman? Nick, I'm great. I'm always great. You know what I mean? I'm I'm always great. I can't complain. W- were you uh, were you crowd struck, or did you manage to avoid that? I managed to avoid it. Good, yeah, good. I, 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 I did kinda. Um, I was, really. Well, I was in the, uh, the the hospital with my my kid. Oh yeah, um, that's right. That's right. That's overnight, right. we went to the ER um, because he'd broken a couple of fingers. I, I was really positive about it. I was like, no, he's probably just sprained them. He's just bruised them. He can go to bed. My wife was like, no, we got to go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital, and like an hour in, sees the blue screens. I was like, oh no, we're here. Right, wait, 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 Nick. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Real quick, before, we'll yeah. get back to the blue screens. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what, okay. what did he do to his fingers? He fell off the bed and he like put his hand down and he snapped snapped this finger. This was all like bent over like this. He did looks he, like he's like the luckiest he, kid. He's like crossing his fingers all the time. Did he? Did he? Did he fall off like in uh, like he was sleeping or was he just playing? No, he's just playing. Oh, he gotcha. was, was, was just goofing around and he just fell off the bed and okay. bang on the ground and then he's crying and his fingers are all bent up and you know so we took him to the the hospital so we're there and just coincidentally we're there and these computers start going offline and um i I don't really know why an update was run in the middle of like the place being open but i get i guess hospitals are open all the time so they go at some point right so Mm -hmm. um suddenly these computers won't come on and you know just by the by uh that's what happened so i wasn't really involved in it i think we were there for longer than we would have been otherwise but um Everyone dealt with it really well. And, um, you know, when we walked out, we said to the nurse, um, how did you deal with the technology problems? And she was talking about how it had, like, brought her team together and it had been a good challenge. And so, so I was like, well, that's a positive thing. But, you know, looking at it, the whole world, like, people are describing this as, um, you know, I think um, Andy Malone put out a video this year. It's like it was the day the world stood still or something like that. And, uh, you know, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's come out of this um, with this going on. Um, I do want to say very quickly, a lot of people have been calling it a Microsoft update that went wrong. It was not a Microsoft update. It was CrowdStrike that struck us, um, <laughs> not Microsoft that um, soft, softed up. I, I don't know. I, I can't do the same thing with Microsoft. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so it was just CrowdStrike that got us, uh, which is a, an IT security company that a lot of enterprises use. Mm. Um and they, they screwed something up and took all these computers offline. And it's kind of like, well, this is the world we live in now, right? It's yes. uh, Things go down and um, things stop working. And I know people have been talking about, well, should we go back to cash? Should everyone have a backup system? Should you? And it's, I, I'm kind of thinking, mm, you know, we've been waiting for this to happen since like the year 2000. So we've had a 24-year run without yeah. this occurring. So I think that's pretty good. I agree. And I also uh, think that this won't be the last time it'll happen. This is just the nature of the beast. And while we can't, I can't pinpoint exactly what happened. I read a couple of reports, did a little digging. It seems like we can't point a finger, which again, nature of the beast. Uh, these these corporations are huge. We're not talking about Microsoft. Again, we're talking about CrowdStrike. Big corporations, a lot of people doing a lot of things, and it's very easy to be like, you know, well, it didn't happen here, or it was a conjunction of things that happened. It's just, this is what, this is the world that we live in, mm-hmm. period. It's going to be uh, strange for us because we know the world without this. I'm always talking about, you know, you know, people who are growing up right now, they are born and raised in an advanced techn- technological mm-hmm. world. It, this is just how it is now more importantly is what do you do about it and the, the the fact of the matter is you don't do anything about it you can't do anything about it the people- i think that's entirely right you don't you're just <laughs> wrong with it and you know yeah. if, you, if you look at like windows updates so you look at the updates that come down to your pc like the, mm-hmm. there are so many updates that are to do with malicious software malware whatever it is security updates right mm-hmm. and 
these guys are having to push out update after update to get in front of these problems that exist in the software that we use. Yeah. And there's lots of discussion and argument about, well, why do those errors exist? Why are, the, why are those holes left open? But the fact that they are left open and the fact that we have to patch them, occasionally things are going to go wrong. And it's great in some ways that what went wrong was an update from the good guys than a massive attack from the bad guys, right? right. And I, I, th I think that's the way that we need to to look at this. I mean, in terms of my customers, I went to an event on um, Friday night, and people were like, "I guess you were you were busy," and I was like, "No, I don't. I don't get involved in this stuff." And I, I doubt that many of the people that I do business with, because I'm focusing on smaller businesses, are using anything from CrowdStrike e either. But right. um, I know there were some people left uh, with computers not functioning that were kind of scratching their heads on Friday morning as to what to do all day. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's, uh, it's there's nothing you could do about it. But this is not nothing new. Like, it's almost like, uh, uh, it's just different because it's technology. Technology is way more integrated in our lives. But I would compare it to something like a car. We all grew up with cars. A lot of us don't know anything about cars. You lift up the hood of a car and they might be able to tell you where where you put the oil, yep. what may or may not be the engine, maybe where you put the antifreeze. You know what I'm saying? Like some people might know that. With cars these days, it's a totally different story though. But are you a car guy? I'm not a car guy. <laughs> My father is. But if you back in the days, if something went wrong with your car, what were you gonna do about it? You can't do anything about it. You take it to a mechanic. Now, if you got a car that was defective even worse because the car came from the manufacturer that way you can't do anything about it unless you say you know what i'm gonna learn how to be a mechanic and fix my own car or i'm gonna learn how to be a mechanic be in the industry and then go work for one of these car companies mm -hmm. because i care that much and this is very annoying to me those are your options but th those same car companies that built the cars they're running technology they're doing things they're putting things together they're putting all these things together and then shipping them out so if you ended up with something that was jacked up you couldn't do anything about it except hopefully get a notice about it and then you take that notice to a dealership get it fixed or you get together on one of them uh, one of them big um class action lawsuits you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. sue the company. I, I guess it's the immediacy though right like if, if you have like something wrong with your car you don't have every air airbag in the country blow up at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is something that might happen. It's something, bring your car in when you can, we'll get it yep. fixed. Um, there's a lot more immediacy in our digital technology yes. that you you screw up a driver that's going into your, your machine and that machine isn't going to reboot the next time you switch it off, you know, or even when you go into that reboot cycle. And so you get this situation of you're not going to see every tesla in a parking lot non-functional at the same time potentially but you might see every computer in an office non-functional at the same time so the impact of it is potentially a bit greater no wait, wait a minute wait a minute our i thought okay maybe i was an idiot to believe this but i thought i heard teslas are are connected to like a server is well, that you know, T tesla may not have been the best example oh okay <laughs> Because I can see all of their cars down at once. And they just suddenly brick every Tesla that's on the, <laughs> the highway all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally un unresearched. I have no idea if they really are. I just thought I heard that. I thought I heard that the computers in there in the, in the Tesla is hooked up to like multiple servers that Tesla well, I think, manages. I, I think I, lots I, of cars are now. I, I don't know if you've seen the stuff that's going on with people getting really upset about their driving history being sent up to the, the cloud mm. and then shared with um, uh, companies that, that provide uh, information, information brokers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them to insurance companies. So mm. uh, th there is this, this greater connection. But I mean, in insofar as, you know, should we have a backup? Should everyone have a non-connected car? Should everyone have a uh, an air-gapped computer? You know, probably not because no. back in back in 1870 people didn't build like a second train line because the first train might have gone wrong you know like the, if the train broke down you just waited until it it, it got fixed right mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the same is true now i i think we we have a much 
an easier way because we're all connected to understand the impact that this is happening. We understand it's having an impact across the entire world all at the same time. Right. Um, but actually, how much does it impact any of us individually um, at any given time? You know, it's inconvenient that your flight was delayed. It's inconvenient that you're held up in the hospital longer than you should have been. So far as I'm aware, this didn't affect any technology that was really kind of critical to people's um, right. safety or, uh, you, you know, like life support systems or whatever it, 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 it could be. And it was Windows machines that were being impacted by this. So ultimately, yeah. I, I believe that it's just simply down to the level of it was an inconvenience and maybe a great inconvenience to a lot of people. But the reality is that in life, you're going to be inconvenienced sometimes. Right. We have a new set of inconveniences where... I was uh, saying the other day, like, I just got a new phone. Uh, I got a new Samsung. And this is a, quote, cheap phone because I'm just like, yo, I just broke my Pixel 6 Pro. Mm -hmm. I know I paid a bunch of money for that, but I don't want to go buy another expensive phone. I already have another expensive phone as my business phone. So fine, I'll go cheap. It's this $400 Samsung. This phone looks nice, feels nice, you know, has all the apps that I need, but it's slow. It's really slow. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'll take really long to back out of a text, and I'll still see the text that I sent that I did not send yet. It'll take a few seconds before I see this text. Now, <laughs> is that something I can complain about? Absolutely. I could be like, this phone sucks. It's too slow. I need a new phone. But it's, it's a minor inconvenience. It's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I could go through it. I'm managing just fine but it just goes to show where we are now because this super powerful technology that I have in my hand years ago, it wasn't there yet. It wasn't where it was like, it's lightning fast. You know what I mean? It was slow like that, but you, you overlooked it because it's slow, but man, I'm connected to the internet. I could get to this website, that website. I'm sending texts all over the place, movies, uh, pictures. I'm going crazy with this little thing in my pocket. So we have a new set of inconveniences like, planes being down across wherever because of technology that's a pretty big deal but it's a new type of inconvenience like think about what you have on the flip side on the way to the airport you can reach into your pocket and see the status of your airport of status of your plane sometimes faster than the airports i've seen that before and i'm like how does how does google know that <laughs> i said why does google have an update everything but <laughs> let's go have a flipping update before the airport does. But regardless, that's the other side. Is the other side is that we live with these really, really convenient, you know, there situations. Are huge, there are huge benefits, and we've all got so used to um, really being inconvenienced so little that I think that when mm -hmm. we are inconvenienced a lot, it, it blows up, and we're all connected. So, like everyone wants to. Uh, just bitch and moan about it on social media, right? Like that's the the way. And Another convenience. <laughs> don't, don't all of these things get categorized under the banner of people refer to them as first world problems, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like we're, uh, our, our, our Tesla didn't start this morning because uh, Elon bricked it. Our, uh, <laughs> our Windows PC won't turn on. That text message just isn't sending quick enough. You know, mm -hmm. all of these things, like they're not really um, big issues. It, you, you know, I, I think the thing is like, uh, we're, we're kind of making light of this. Like there are situations where technology going wrong can have real bad, impactful problems. Absolutely. Like, I'm sure we will hear stories of, you know, the, the, the power plant where their Windows machines went down and that had significant issues or the water treatment plant or whatever. Like, I'm sure there are these things out there, but the, the vast majority of people just getting a Friday off, it's not the, it's not the, the end of the world. Right, right, right. I, so, I'm with you. So, so what can be the end of the world, though, uh, we both know about, Thurman, is um, when your document management gets a bit confused, because that really is a real inconvenience, you know, um, and that's, that's the time where you call Mr. SharePoint and say, hey, could you come and help me with my documents, right? right, so right, right. <laughs> I know you have a story of something that you've been thinking about this week that um, struck you. Maybe not yeah. proud struck you, but struck you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you really leaning into that one. <laughs> I'm leaning so, into it. I like, as I, I said like to you, no one, I haven't seen that anywhere, crowd struck. And I'm like, how has no one come up with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you have seen it before this uh, gets published. I thought of it first. 
We we would like to see it. Please uh put it in the comments. I want to see that. And yes, Nick, Nick did think of this first. We, we so, are recording this early this week as well. I just want to point that out. That exactly. Usually we record this on a Friday, and we're currently recording this Tuesday afternoon. So it's right. only been like three or four days since that happened. So anyone that's wondering if if you came up if you come up with this on Thursday, then you're too late. Right. Here first. There you go. Um. So about documents. One of the things that I always talk about with documents, I mean, the thing that I'm going to talk about, it's a, it's a, it's nothing new. It's something that I always say. I just don't think I've said it on this show yet. But inside of a Facebook group, someone anonymously posted hmm. the following: How would you manage large numbers of deliverables? I'm talking 100 to 200 per week with one to 2,000 hours effort. Um, and that was it. That was the crux of the post. See, that was the whole thing. And this person. Like I said, it was anonymous, but then also people were like, what are you talking about? What kind of deliverables is standard third? And so the person had to give a little bit more detail. They said it were being vague on purpose. So the detail includes <laughs> that they're talking about um, construction drawings. So okay. I jump in and I'm like, look, I'm biased. Use SharePoint, you know what I mean? Because if you work at an organization, the one thing I would say, if you work at an organization, it's highly likely they pay for Microsoft. And if they do, you already have access to SharePoint. Number two, SharePoint, one of the features of SharePoint, one of the primary features is document management. And when you use the document management, you get to put them in all kinds of categories, all kinds of stuff. So I told that person, I'm going to shoot them a YouTube video and literally show them what they could do, which that's one side. It's not a problem. There's a different problem floating around here. And it's this uh, 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 hundreds and thousands of documents he this person only mentioned a few hundred thousand a few hundred but i know there's companies out there with thousands of documents and the issue that i have or the challenge that that company has that i would present to them is that do you really need all of those documents and i am willing to bet in every single situation that we scan through their uh, their uh their their setup you don't need all those documents when I talk to an organization, I'm always going through a three-step process. Mm -hmm. It's first, get everything in one area. Like, what are you managing? What do you take care of? What do you have to process? What do you do? What's all the things you need to get together? Put it on one area. Put it in one area. That's a site. That's first step. The second step is combing through your documents and making a decision. Does it need to stay as a document or not? If it stays as a document, cool. The or not part is we move on to the third step, which is, we need to convert this. Does it need to be a, a form? Does it need to be part of a process? Does it need to go on a site somewhere or in a library that's not filled with documents, but filled with text instead? So maybe it's like policies and procedures, standard operating procedures or whatever. That's the decision making process. One, two, three. You don't need all of those documents. However, this person said construction drawings. I don't know anything about construction. I do know they make a lot of blueprints and they, they do a lot of, of you know, they build big buildings or or whatever. And there's a bunch of phases to these doc, uh, to these. Uh, so, so, so let me ask you a question, first of all, before you, you dig into that uh, specific. Right. So you're talking about deciding what you're doing with your documents. Like, and I, I just want to break this down so that everyone who's listening can fully understand what you're saying here. So I think what you're saying, Thurman, is that in any process you have documents that are artifacts that you use to facilitate that process mm -hmm. and then you have documents that might be artifacts that evidence that process that you've mm -hmm. gone through that workflow yep. but then you have other things that are just kind of transactional that move you through the steps of that process and yes. what you're saying is those do those don't necessarily need to be documents those could be forms those could be power apps those could be uh the the columns on your sharepoint site whatever it may be to right. uh, enable you to do it without ever having to create that that transitional document is that what you're kind of outlining there yeah that is what i'm saying because think of any uh tool that you might use hmm. uh, a, a social platform you don't go on the platform creating files you go on the platform creating information. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to see some kind of file, if you will, you can produce that from the information that you've created. 
So if you want to create a report, highly likely your report is going to be inside of a spreadsheet. You mm -hmm. probably might pull it out. You got some CSV, you know, some common separated values, or you pull it straight into what can be an Excel file. You just, that's your, you have your raw data. Then you can start to cook up some charts, whatever you want to do. That's all mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. You might get to the point now where you say, okay, I have my data. I have my charts inside of a spreadsheet, which is a file, but Hey, I need to present this information. So maybe you bust out a PowerPoint or whatever. Now you have a doc, two documents. Mm -hmm. One is a spreadsheet with raw data. And another one is a PowerPoint with a way to present that data to your leadership. That's the mind frame that I want people to get into is that use systems, pull the information out, go from there. There are th times when you definitely need a document, but think it through. Are mm -hmm. you trying to mm -hmm. run your process on the back of this document or documents, or do you need to send those documents through email as a part of your process that runs on the back of email, which is also another issue? If you have to do those kind of things, it's, you have to reevaluate, do you need that document? You know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's a lot of PDF forms. I don't have a problem with PDF forms, no big deal. But if your PDF form, let's say you have a PDF form for um, requesting leave or whatever, mm -hmm. you take the PDF form and you have 50 people inside of the uh, organization. And over the last two years, every time somebody needs to do a, uh, um, a request for vacation or whatever, they do it through this PDF form. So let's mm -hmm. say at this point you have 120 documents just all piled up in some folder somewhere requests uh of uh, uh people going on vacation yep immediately how do you quantify that like what you now have to what run metrics on the xml the code inside of the pdf in in order to pull those in order to pull that data out consider the the 150 documents that you have versus 150 records inside of a database somewhere you would mm -hmm. much rather the 150 mm -hmm. records because you can run your metrics on that. You can figure out what's going on there. You can mine that data for information. If you have 150 files, well, first you have extra space, which you know I guess people could combat whether or not that's a big deal. You got extra space. But then number two is, how do you quantify that? What are you doing mm -hmm. with that? Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you doing? So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with your PDF files that are forms because PDF, you know, you can make good forms with those PDFs. But if I'm in your organization, and there is no higher organization telling you that you must have these on PDFs. I'm telling you to get rid of that process and get it into a system. And if you need information out of it, pull the report out of the uh, out of the system. We mm -hmm. have to stop mm -hmm. with these tons and tons and tons of documents. It's so unnecessary. But if if that's the place where you have the friction, I, I think that's the thing that I would add to that. That too, always. Where, yes. where where do you have the friction in your processes? Because clearly this person that you're referencing with their um, 100 to 200 deliverables per week, potentially 2,000 hours of labor mm -hmm. delivering those. So if, if I'm doing my math right, that's uh, that's potentially 50 people. That's 50 full-time employees yep. um, delivering that that labor. That's, that's a big team of people. And when you go into the specifics of um something like construction drawings this is where you get into the um the, the realm of depending on what it is you're trying to do there are probably tools out there that are designed for you to do them you don't have to reinvent the wheel um i know that in the construction industry there's a package called procore that people use um, which is a, a project management platform that allows you to stick all of your construction drawings and so on. And, and construction yeah. drawings can be can be tricky because you can end up like it might be a hundred documents, but it also might be um, PDFs that are uh, 300, 500, 700 megabytes. Um, because now, now wait, 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 when you say that, do you mean? one of those drawings could be yeah. hundreds of megabytes? Well, I, I mean, usually when these packages are put, so uh, the whatever, whoever's putting the packages together will put together packages of documentation for different parts of the project mm -hmm. that 
are of different levels of complexity, but they're all put together as a package, right? So mm-hmm. um, you'll, you'll have a, a HVAC um, package, uh, um, uh, you, you know, the, the, the core construction of the building, whatever it may be. So um, your, your mechanical stuff, your electrical stuff, all of this stuff will be separated out in, in such a way that it's relevant to different people. Um, so you might end up with 100 pages that to get into the detail of it, you need them printed if you are going to have them physically or present in, in front of you printed to the size of your desk wow. to make that a a, a useful uh, package of information to see so just dealing with the scale you know like if you're dealing with those kinds of documents then you might need something that's more specialist than sharepoint to, to deal with that and, mm-hmm. and that's okay yeah, uh, that, that's, that's perfectly fine. There are there are packages that are designed for a particular purpose. I was just um, a couple of weeks ago. I was um, working with um, uh, an attorney's office, and they dealt with um, they dealt with packages that were. Um, 100, 200, 500 pages of documentation that might be attached to a case. And at some point, they needed to put all this stuff together. Um, And because of the the scale of what they were dealing with and what they actually needed to deal with that data, that was another case where it made sense to look at what solutions are there out there that um, work with that particular need. And yeah, they still use Microsoft 365. There's Microsoft 365 is still core to what they do. Mm-hmm. But adding in an extra package, there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes that's what you need. And, you know, someone came to me and they said, I, I'm responsible for 2,000 hours of labor a week. And I'm not sure how to make sure that we manage deliverables properly. That's probably a different question to... I work on three projects at the same time, and I'm not sure how to manage my deliverables properly. Right, like you're suddenly going from the scale of someone's personal organization with the tools that they've got to do you actually have the right tools in your business? Um, because Absolutely. that's going to be a very costly part of your business. If you're if you're spending two thousand hours a week when it could have been five hundred hours a week, and that fifteen hundred hours is made up of inefficiency, then that's costing your business big time. So you could afford to spend a decent amount of money on fixing that problem if that's a big part of the friction in your business. Yeah, I I, I want to mention that too, or piggyback on that. <clears throat> I'm glad you mentioned the friction. That's also important. Um especially when talking about something like this in my years of experience it's this it's just not a a hard line in the sand i i speak with my chest you know what i'm saying but i'm very uh understanding when i talk to people that i might shout about uh, sharepoint all day every day but if you are not complaining about your current situation you sing its praises you think this thing is you know the bee's knees and it's knocking out of the park. I'm not going to try to convince you to do something different. I'm going to see how we can help support what you're already doing, which is the way we should think. It's like, it's not, I am, I'm so against a bunch of documents, but not in the case where you actually need a bunch of documents. But to your point, Nick, if, if there's friction, that's one thing. But then the other thing is, what are you trying to accomplish? If you were like, what are you, what are you trying to do? Like you, like you said, two th- two things that you need to that you need to figure out is huh? is wh- where's the friction? What what where, 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 what's the issue here? But then also, what are you trying to do? So back to that vacation um, request. If the friction is that when the when the um, admin, when the executive admin gets these, that it's taken long to, I gotta open up the PDF, I gotta. Uh, you know, comb through each one of these things. Then I have to take the information and paste it into a spreadsheet maybe because someone else has to get this information or I'm passing the documents around through email. And a lot of the times we get confused about where we are in the process because we're passing it around an email. That sounds like friction. Hmm. We need to remove that friction or reduce that friction. But then also, what are you trying to do? You're trying to approve vacation requests. But let me ask you, do most of them get uh, approved anyway? Like, so do you even need this process or do you just need a, everybody to know you need to change your vacation policy? Like this new thing with the, uh, what is that? The unlimited PTO or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how to deal with that, but I hear that's a thing. But my point is, yes, Nick, you're right. Where's the friction? But then on top of that, what are you trying to do? You know what I mean? Like these are all things to talk about. I mean, to think about with the underlying thought process being, 
we don't need that many documents. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think, you, you know, the, the dichotomy for me is you have the friction and you have the value. Mm-hmm. And something that delivers a lot of value and is seen as good, even if it takes a lot of friction or from the outside, it looks like it's a lot of friction to get yes. it done. Then that's that's perfectly fine. Like sometimes you'll look at processes that people engage with and enjoy and think they do a lot for them. And um, you kind of scratch your head and say, we could make this more efficient. But you're not always trying to make things ultimately efficient if that's going to break the relationship that employees or teams have in doing that thing you know sometimes sometimes the inefficient way of doing something is worth the rub um if that's going to if that adds a lot of value to the business it's not just about the value in that particular process it's the value in having a relationship with other teams it's the the value in learning about different types of technology it's the value in um the knowledge that someone got you know if if the executive assistant getting all of those forms learn something that from those forms about you know someone's um off sick someone's looking after a family member if that's from that value that goes to the boss and says hey you might want to highlight this you might want to to think about this with performance or whatever it may be then that could be a positive thing you know how do you get those things coming around your business and sometimes what uh, we do is we we, we will go into a, a, a business I, I i mean we as as consultants will go into a business and um be uh, be told that there's a problem to fix a particular problem that someone has has decided exists and try to find a solution to that particular problem but mm-hmm. sometimes what i find is the problem that i'm told exists doesn't actually exist in my opinion yeah um it's, it's an opinion from a particular viewpoint and you know your person with the, the thousand hours or two thousand hours of labor underneath the per week that they're that they're looking after and they can't get efficiency out of what's going on there my question would be well are you looking for a new tool are you looking for a new process or are you looking for coaching on how to be a leader of that that many people right like are you someone who's been promoted into a position or you've come into a position where you're responsible for a much bigger team and you're finding it difficult to see what's being achieved or to allocate work and so and you know the solution isn't always go and buy a piece of software um there are lots of tools that that we can have or we can advise on to to get the same job done and and sometimes it's that that softer side of things of do you have the right support in the position that you're in um is the right question as opposed to what technology are you using yeah you're you're one thousand (laughs) percent nick you're good you're you're good i I try i try you know (laughs) My, my, if anyone's listening, my link is below. If you want to take a look at what I do, all the contact details are down there. Yeah, yeah. And the, the the reason I'm saying that is because you obviously understand layers. You understand asking the right questions. You understand there's no hard and fast rule for the most part. You know what I mean? When it comes to these things, it's literally the same way I think. And you, you, I think that's what makes a good consultant. You have to know how to listen. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to know how to listen and where the experience comes in is I've seen this before. I know that there might, to your point, but you were just saying, if you've been experienced long enough, you know, it might not be a tool problem. Highly likely it's not a tool problem. It's people. It's people behind these businesses. You might see, I just did it today or even yesterday. I just spoke to somebody who they know about how I, uh, harp on SharePoint or I'm always screaming about SharePoint, but I'm always like, you know, talking bad about Excel. <laughs> right. So they're, they're consulting with me and they're like, I could tell in the tone of their voice that she thinks I'm going to say what she's doing is bad because she's using a spreadsheet, which I didn't. I was like the part that we need to collect the information. We have done that. We've done it with a form. Now that it's inside of the spreadsheet, we got to think, do we need to move it to SharePoint or can we accomplish the goal inside of the spreadsheet? That's how we have to think. That's how we have to move. It's it's something that you gain as you consult over time. You you see different businesses. You start to see certain patterns. You start to see what has been successful for you. And then you just you operate that way. You know what I'm saying? You just you get better with time. And I could just I just wanted to say I could tell by the, the way you think and the questions that you ask, which I already knew. But just seeing it in motion, 
it just makes me excited. You know what I'm saying? I like, I like a, a good consultant that asks good questions because a well, lot of times people don't ask questions. This is something we both agree on, that everything comes back to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I think that's so important that, that, that technology only works if people understand the why, they understand the how, they understand the what, you know, you, you, you have to get that piece in alignment uh, because until until Copilot takes over with GPT-10, you know, like we, we're going to be reliant on people. Yeah, people, people, for the most part, when they think technology, they think of what we have today, which, yes, fine. But technology comes in all kinds of forms. There was a time when, um, or matter of fact, if you think of a basketball, right? A basketball is a, is a type of technology, you know what I'm saying, for, for people to use to play a sport with, right? If you pick up the basketball, you might suck with that basketball. Somebody oh, else picks I, I do. I, it's not a might. I definitely do. <laughs> if somebody else picks up the basketball, they're good at, with the basketball. And there might be some people who are in between who, like, they don't play every day, but they know how to shoot a ball into a rim or whatever. It's it's a piece of technology that, you know, has dimensions and different colors, and they can be built different ways. It's designed a certain way to make sure it fits inside of the rim, that you could, you could have ones for kids or have ones for adults. Technology comes in all different forms. We just know it, of it today with these devices mm -hmm. and the network and the internet and all this other stuff. But you, you really have to see things that way. It's how the person uses that uh, 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 tool. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A football is designed a certain way for you to hold it, for you to throw it, for you to catch it in a certain way. That's how things are. And you have to recognize that and think of technology as more than just Oh, the internet and devices. You know what I'm saying? It's people using these things. Period. Mm -hmm. hey, I yeah, off it, my soapbox. It, it, exactly. I, I think you're, you're you're entirely right there. And you know, I think the other thing that that's come up. Uh, you, you've had this experience um, this week that we're talking about, and another thing that's come up for me this week is talking with people about integration and mm -hmm. how do we integrate different technologies together? Because again, I think this is an area where very often we look at something or that the people that we'll be talking to look at something purely from a technology point of view and miss the point that there's a lot more going on there. And I think we've talked before about if you look down the, um, the low code solutions that are out there that people might start thinking, oh, well, if I, if I can build a power app that does what my CRM system can do and fixes these three things that are inconveniences for us, in our CRM system, that would be fantastic. And I'm back here saying, no, you don't want to do that. Like your CRM system might be great. And if there's only three things that are wrong with it that cause you inconvenience, and let's see if we can um, integrate some other tool with it or extend it in some way um, to do that. And now I'm seeing exactly the same thing coming up again and again with with AI as well, of, mm -hmm. you know, AI is the answer to everything. If we could just sit there and type to Copilot everything that we wanted to do in our day, this the world would be this utopian place. And I'm like, no, that, that's not the point of this. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. But I feel like we're back to the same. It's a different set of tools. It's a different technology that mm -hmm. everyone's excited about. But it's the same basic problem of... Uh, the people who are excited about it, and that's great, the people who are excited about it, there are lots of people who are like, no, I don't want it. There are people like you, Thurman, that won't get Copilot and, <laughs> and try it out, you know? So the people who embrace it, that's great. But uh, they also want to, to run away ahead of the pack in some ways and just replicate everything and integrate everything with AI. I'm like, no, that's not what we should be. I, I don't want our finance team sitting there um, inputting invoices just by typing to Copilot. That doesn't seem like a, an right. efficient way to do business. Mm -hmm. We don't want architects like doing their CAD drawings by by chatting with Copilot. That doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, I, I, I think Rick maybe... I strongly agree with what you're saying. I just think that right now, that's the case. In the future, uh, I don't know, man. It might get a little crazy. <laughs> I seen uh, you seen that documentary or documentary uh, modern day modern day slaves? It was something about AI and how things are changing in like 2026 or 27. I'll send it to you. It's kind of crazy, but it's an hour long. It's an hour long investment. Um, so I was gonna say, if you think about 
what's happening with AI? Again, I love this comparison where we look at it in other ways, right? So TV, if you think about TV, um, what we know TV has been over this time has been, you turn it on, you know, it catches the frequencies, you use your remote to get what you got to get. There was a little bit of a transitional time where people had to wrap their minds around. It's no longer that it is now damn near a computer that you can open up you can open up and install apps on and then watch tv on mm -hmm. that's a big mm -hmm. transition to make where there are still some people who don't really grasp that concept because they consume tv the, the old school way mm -hmm. and that is it's a it's a transition it's a change it's a new introduction to how we consume uh media on on a on a tv you got the apps, you got a ton of settings. It could connect to the internet. Those apps need to be updated just like your phone, except there's this big TV that you're used to using in a certain way where it didn't work like that before. So now with this new introduction, you have to wrap your mind around the upgrade. AI is an upgrade. It's a pretty damn good one. It's a real good one, but it's an upgrade. You know what I'm saying? It's what were you doing before? Hmm. How can you do it better? not what were you doing before what were you not doing before and now hey copilot can now do it for you <laughs> like consider that think about where that works in any other area of your life it doesn't work like that you can't just you know willy-nilly have some great things happen for you it takes work it takes attention it takes time it mm -hmm. may take less attention work and time than before but it still takes time, attention, and work to understand AI, to understand your own processes and how you can integrate it and all these other things. So I'm, I'm with you. I just want to keep driving home that point about if you walk away with anything from here today, people, you know what I mean? Like th these things become easier. The AI, the integration, the, uh, you know, the upgrades, all these things become easier when you know what you're doing first, period. Mm -hmm. When you have a a, a, a a wrap, when you can wrap your mind around what you're already currently doing, just makes these upgrades that much easier. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's entirely right. You need to have a path, and that path can be facilitated by technology once technology becomes the the be all and end all of it. I mean, unless you're the the CEO of Microsoft or something, in which case, yeah, yeah, the technology is kind of the be all and end. Of, but even <laughs> then, that, that that that's not true. I mean, uh, Microsoft does a heck of a lot of work, like engaging with customers and working out what customers are trying to do, and then providing technology solutions to that. It's not just a whole bunch of people in a darkened room being like, "Oh, what seems fun to build today?" I know there are some naysayers who believe that's the case but i i can tell you firsthand that is not the case like there's a lot of opportunity to um to give feedback and engage and uh for people to to listen at least some of the time so i don't think there's any business out there where the right answer is just to be all consumed by the technology like it's got to be what are you trying to achieve nick i'll what tell are... you what i wholeheartedly believe I haven't been behind those walls, but I believe there's a lot of offices inside of Microsoft using spreadsheets for important things. <laughs> I bet there's a lot of offices behind there. It's human nature. It's like, this is easy. This is what we've used. Even though we work at Microsoft, I bet you there's a bunch of, you know, rogue spreadsheets out there inside of the Microsoft ecosystem of people not even using the technology that their own company makes. I don't think they're using um, Google. Pardon. I don't think they're that, using that, Google. That would be, that would be controversial <laughs> if, like, inside of Microsoft, everyone's using Google Workspace. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would be a little uh, excessive. I don't if think that, that's that, If that leaked out, then uh, that, would be, that would be problematic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's less of a chance than the spreadsheets, which is good because that's a Microsoft tool. Uh, if Although, have you ever used Google Workspace? The people at Google might be using Microsoft 365. Yes, that I, that, <laughs> that I can see. I can actually see that, even though or I bet you most people would tell you it's the other way around. But I bet you there are people, if they know what's up, using uh, 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 Microsoft inside of that uh, Google ecosystem. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> All right, man, Nick. Well, cool. What you got before we get out of here? 
What have I got going on? I, I'm taking a little vacation. Nice. I, I'm, I, it's a it's a staycation. Um, I'm being visited by my mother. So um, <laughs> nice. So yeah, she's she's going to be here for the first time in in years. So that's going to be that's going to be fun. And we, what, and, what does that what does that look like? Nick being visited by his moms. Like, do y'all have a like? schedule? Or you just no, we, well, I, you know, my son um, had all these plans of what he wanted to do with with Nana while she was here, um, and most of them involved having full use of his fingers. So <laughs> I don't honestly know at this point. Like, he can't go to the pool, he can't ride his bike, he can't go on his scooter. He's only three, so mm. um, we're just going to, have to find a whole bunch of other things. But he had a list of all the things he wanted to do while she was here, and most of them have now been struck off the list because of his broken hand. So he's we'll, in a cast. We'll, we'll work it out. He's, he's in a cast. He might, um, he might have to have some surgery. We're finding out tomorrow. So wow. um, hopefully he's just able to be put back in a cast and he'll be, he'll be fine, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to be making it up as we go along. All um, right. So all right. I will report back at the next episode. If anyone is interested at all, I will report back at the next episode <laughs> as to what we finally did. All right, good deal, good deal. <laughs> well, what about you, Thurman? What have you got going on? Uh, listen, I, I do. If you're watching this, you clearly are a YouTube connoisseur. You, you're into YouTube. I would have you know that I'm ramping up my YouTube game, the SharePoint Help Desk. Go take a look over there. See if you you uh, see if I could convince you to get out of those spreadsheets. I'm thinking about buying a website, something like a. I hate spreadsheets or quit spreadsheets or something like that. Something that's a well, little. You're, you're going to have to go and search for those now because you've just said them. And obviously, our, our yeah, millions right. of viewers, they're going to jump straight you're on right. that and try to buy those. You're absolutely right. Now I'm going to have to go buy it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, the SharePoint Help Desk on YouTube, check it out over there. I have videos that basically show you why you should stop using spreadsheets to, uh, okay, why you should stop using spreadsheets the way you're using them. I always like to say you're eating cereal with a fork. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Is it the most efficient way to do that? Is the fork the right tool for you to be doing that? No. You would much rather use a spoon. SharePoint is your spoon. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I get what you're saying. And particularly if you work at Microsoft and you're secretly eating cereal with a fork, <laughs> go check out Thurman's uh, exactly. YouTube channel. Exactly. Oh, man. All right, Nick. We're going to see you next time. All right, see ya. All right. Bye.